All right, so we're going to start off with contaminants in South Dakota water. The reason I decided to do a community project on water safety is because here in Aberdeen, we got a notice in the mail that stated that Aberdeen violated a drinking water requirement. Um, they had failed their turbidity test, and what this means is that the water was too cloudy, and although turbidity has no health concerns, it can interfere with the disinfection and increase microbial growth in water. Um, I want to start off with saying that legal does not equal safe. I say this because the Environmental Protection Agency hasn't reviewed um, the legal limits on contaminants in about 20 years, and I think that's something that's really important and needs, um, and that the public should be educated about um, so they can take precautions to avoid um, getting sick from water. There's a website that you can use called EWG.org or Environmental Work Group that specializes in research and advocacy in the areas of toxic chemicals, drinking water pollutants, and more. Um, it's a great resource that will tell you more information on your county's water quality. Um, this website will also tell you what contaminants were found in the water as well if any have exceeded the contaminant guidelines and what that means. So above I have um, listed the five major contaminants that were listed when looking at Aberdeen, Sioux Falls, and Rapid City. Starting off with arsenic, um, which was found only in Sioux Falls. It's a potent carcinogen that is known to cause bladder, lung, and skin cancer. And all of these um, have a risk for skin for cancer, it's just um, the severity ranges. Um, so with arsenic, it can um, get into water from soil sediments and groundwater. The picture on the right kind of shows a little bit of that. Um, you can do more research on that as well if you would like to know how that gets into the water. Um, so arsenic was found to be 300 times over EWD's legal limit. Nationwide, however, the EPA, sorry, or Environmental Protection Agency's um, legal limit is 10 ppb or parts per billion. However, the Environmental Protection Agency's analysis has showed that the legal limit is not low enough to protect the public health and therefore arsenic has caused up to 600 cancer cases in a million people and it can also be found in food. Um, so it's really important to educate people and that's why I think that the um, legal does not equal safe as well. So moving on to chromium, which was found in all three um, places, Sioux Falls, Aberdeen, and Rapid City. Um, it is a cancer-causing contaminant that gets into water by pollution. There's actually no legal limit for chromium. Um, during research, it was found that it actually causes tumors on the inner lining of the stomachs. Um, although I don't think that there was any um, human experience or treatments, um, but that was just found on um, animals. So going to haloacidic and the total trihalomethane. So these are both um, really low in getting cancer, but I still it's still a risk. Um, so for the haloacidic, um, it's a possible cancer causing agent. Um, and it is when uh, it gets into the water when chlorine disinfectant is added to tap water. And then the trihalomethane is a one in a million lifetime cancer risk level. Um, and it gets into the water um, during treatment when they use chlorine and other disinfectants. And then the picture to the right is what I was talking about earlier. I think it's a great visualization on how pollutants um, can cause contaminants to get into the water. All right, so moving on to waterborne illnesses, previously we talked about how Aberdeen failed its turbidity test, and a concern about that turbidity is that it can indicate the presence of disease causing organisms like bacteria, viruses, and parasites. Um, I mainly wanted to focus on three top waterborne illnesses, so I decided to do these three, um, cryptosporidosis, legionellosis, and then giardiasis. So starting off with um, cryptosporidosis, um, it is a parasite that is found in stool, and you get this infection by drinking water contaminated with that stool. Um, chlorine may not kill the parasite because it has a very thick outer shell. Um, the symptoms would be diarrhea, vomiting, and fever. Um, and it can also be life-threatening for those with HIV or AIDS, um, or cancer and transplant patients, and those inherited diseases um, that may affect the immune system. So moving on to legionellosis, um, it is caused by a legionella bacteria. It is a serious pneumonia 
which um, is called the Legionnaire's disease. Um, but that Legionella bacteria can also cause a less serious illness called Pontiac fever. Symptoms of Legionnaire's disease would be cough, shortness of breath, fever, muscle aches, nausea, and confusion. The symptoms of Pontiac fever would be um, a lot less severe, which would be like um, fever and muscle aches. Pontiac fever also only lasts like less than a week. I think it said three days to get the symptoms, where the Legionnaire's disease um, takes about two weeks to even get those symptoms. Um, uh, one out of 10 people who get Legionnaire's disease do end up passing away. Um, and if they get Legionnaire's disease while they are in the hospital, one out of four will end up passing away. Um, those who are in a at an increased risk would be those 50 or older, current or former smokers, those who have chronic lung diseases like COPD, um, and those who have um, underlying diseases like diabetes, kidney failure, or um, liver failure. So, um, oh, and then also the top picture of this um, shows the um, incidence that South Dakota has, and it is higher up there. Um, but I don't think there's too many cases of it in South Dakota specifically. Moving on to giardiasis. So it is caused by a protozoan parasite called, um, Giardia duodenalis. Um, it mainly causes GI symptoms like diarrhea, um, abdominal cramps, bloating, weight loss, and malabsorption. Um, so the bottom picture of this um, shows pretty much the highest um, or the incidence that South Dakota has. Um, from 1955 to 2018, South Dakota had a total of 114 cases and it has the second highest incidence, which the picture shows, um, of following by the District of Columbia. Okay, so effects on human health. This is really just a summary, but also it has a little bit of more added information. When we talked about contaminants in the second slide, all of those contaminants were cancer related, and that's because we were focused on the long-term effects of those contaminants. So now we're gonna be talking a little bit about the short-term and what happens, as well as other information on waterborne diseases. Chemical exposure, we have short-term and long-term effects. Like I said, we already talked about those long-term effects a little bit. High doses of exposure can lead to skin discoloration. This is short-term, um, nervous system damage, organ damage, reproductive rights, and developmental rights. The picture on the right, I like a lot because it adds not only the contaminants, but it kind of um, talks about those waterborne illnesses and it makes everything make sense. When we talk about those waterborne diseases, we also add in the microbes, which can cause typhoid fever or cholera. And I didn't talk about these because although yes, they're more life-threatening, they are more rare. And when we talk about these waterborne diseases, we talk, there's a whole lot of GI symptoms, which makes sense. So the stomach pain, the vomiting, the diarrhea, headaches, fever, kidney failure. And then we can also get hepatitis. Um, and then a big portion on this, even though I know it's effects on human health, I know that we love our fur babies, so I added in what happens with our pets when they drink that type of water. So they can have the vomiting, fatigue, shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, coughing, convulsions, liver failure, and respiratory paralysis leading to death. So obviously they have a lot, they're more at risk to um, the contaminants. How to keep your water safe. So we have the three filters up here, the activated carbon, the reverse osmosis, and the ion exchange, but we're going to be talking about all three of those more in depth on the next slide. I really wanted to focus this slide on what to do outside of the home because it is a very important part in keeping water safe. So keep pollution out of the water, you know, trash. If you see something, just pick it up. If you return um, or if you use motor oil, return it for recycling because um, if you pour it down an oil storm drain or on a street, it'll wash out to the nearest water body where it will remain untreated. Avoid using long fertilizers that contain phosphorus um, because phosphorus can be carried by rain into nearby water bodies where it may cause detrimental environmental problems. You want to flush responsibly. 
because flushing items that were not designed to be flushed is a waste of clean water and can not only build up plumbing, but it can also pollute previously clean water. Using the trash and not the drain, disposing grease, personal hygiene products, and other things in the garbage can prevent the materials from clogging the pipes, and therefore, um, if it were to clog the pipes, it would lead to raw, raw sewage overflow, and then block the buzz. If you, I actually didn't think about this one. I did some research about it. It was really interesting. Um, if you prevent mosquitoes from breeding, it can um, help keep water safe and clean. So by eliminating standing water by dumping it out, it can help also prevent um, the mosquito-borne illnesses. So filters, we're going to talk about the three main filters, the activated carbon, reverse osmosis, and the ion exchange. Starting with the activated carbon, um, water moves through the filters and impurities like chlorine and iodine bond with that carbon, which then reduces the taste and odors in the water. And then the carbon filtration is commonly used in standalone systems and pitcher filters, which is what is the very first picture on the left side. Um, and it's also in appliances like refrigerators and water coolers and even water treatment systems. Um, which can also include other technologies like the reverse osmosis. Um, so the activated carbon is very common. Like I said, it removes chlorine, pesticides, and components of gasoline solvents in industrial cleaners, and it reduces the taste and odors. However, it is not effective in removing potentially harmful bacteria. Um, the very first picture on the right top, so that's the process of what it is. I wanted to show what it generally looks like on the outside as well as the process on the inside, which is why there's the arrow to make sure that everything goes well. Um, moving on to reverse osmosis. So reverse osmosis is a water treatment process that removes the contaminants from water by using pressure to force out the water molecules through a semi-permeal membrane, which thus leaves contaminants filtered out. Um, it filters most contaminants and it removes bacteria that can lead to diseases like hepatitis A, norovirus, and E. coli. However, it does waste a lot of water. And then finally, we have the ion exchange, which is really interesting because it's mainly used for water softening um, because it takes unwanted dissolved ions in water like sulfate or arsenic and exchanges them for ions with similar charges. Um, it does reduce contaminants, but it does not remove particles <clears throat> or bacteria. If you're going for the least expensive, you would want to do the activated carbon. But if you want to go for the most effective, it would definitely be the reverse osmosis. When talking to the owner of the one-legged pheasant here in Aberdeen, he uses all three of these actually. So he goes to the water softener, which is the ion exchange first. Um, which softens that water and then he will um, have it go into an activated carbon filter and then finally through reverse osmosis um, he said that he tested it before um, with just tap water compared to the filtered water um, and it was just a massive difference in his beer alone and that's why everything has gone so well um, but regardless on the choice of filter, it is extremely important to be educated about the types of filters and what contaminants may be in your water. I highly, highly encourage looking at the EWG.org website, the Environmental Work Group um, website to see what is in your water, but also to understand how to prevent you and your family from those waterborne illnesses.